Hello, go ahead and get rolling on the nervous system lab here. This is a two part lab. We'll do the neuron and brain for this week's lab, and then we'll do the uh, spinal cord and special senses in the following lab. So you'll see your lab notes this week go from page 28 to page 30 in your lab manual. Um, there is a half of section objective eight um, that we won't cover today regarding the spinal cord as well as on page 31 and 32. Um, so that would be objective 11. Uh, those are going to be mushed into next week's topic for the special senses. So you won't be required to understand that material for pages uh, 31 and 32 um, until next week. And so this presentation will not cover that material, nor will you find that on your lab quiz for the week. So going ahead and getting started here with objective one, we need to be able to identify the following parts of a typical motor neuron. And these types of neurons are multipolar neurons, which we cover a little bit in lecture. So this should look relatively familiar to you, but we can go ahead and chat a little bit about it. There are the dendrites, which are gonna be on the outside of what we call the cell body. So this is gonna be the soma or the cell body. And these dendrites are gonna be receiving signals from other cells. So these are kind of like the reception areas that are gonna be receiving input from different axons, uh, axon terminals. All right, so we'll get to that in a second. Inside the soma or the cell body is the nucleus. All right, it's gonna be helping control uh, different aspects of the neuron. So it's the control center of the cell. And then inside the nucleus, would find, we would find the nucleolus, just like we talked about in our cell section for lab. All right, so we have the cell body and the nucleus inside that, and then the nucleolus inside that. Can't really visualize that here. Dendrites are going to be, once again, receiving uh, aspects or signals from other neurons. They receive those um, via these axon terminals. All right, so extending away from the, uh, the, the cell body, we have this axon. So it'll be the longest projection coming off of it, so don't get it confused with other dendrites. And it will be myelinated. And then it will end with these axon terminals. All right, these are also called the synaptic knobs or synaptic terminals in lecture. So these axon terminals, where they terminate, the terminate of the axon, will send signals to other dendrites of other neurons so that they can communicate together. These axons are going to be myelinated. All right, so if we're talking about the central nervous system, we're going to be talking about the uh, myelin sheath being consistent with oligodendrocytes, but this is a motor neuron, all right? So that means we're talking about the peripheral nervous system, so this myelin has to be a Schwann cell then, all right, different type of cell, but it's still myelin. So Schwann cells are gonna be myelinating these axons. And then in between each little myelin chunk, we have what we call the node of Ranvier. All right, so this myelin is so thick and fat that it can't, um, uh, or that the membrane surrounding the axon cannot diffuse ions across, like we talked about in our transport mechanisms earlier in the semester. And so we uh, instead have these ions diffusing in between the myelin sheath chunks, if you will. And so that's going to help this communicate an electrical signal bouncing from myelin sheath to myelin sheath here. Okay, so that's a little bit of physiology you don't necessarily need to know. Just know that we have the myelin sheath in chunks here, and in between each little chunk we have the nodes of Ranvier. Next, we can talk about some histology. So this is something that we could be looking at in the microscope in lab. So what we'll see here is nervous tissue. So if I show you this on the lab quiz and ask you what type of tissue is this, you'll tell me nervous tissue. If I ask you where might you find this in the body, you could tell me the brain, the spinal cord, or nerves. All right, so this is one neuron. You can kind of see a nucleus here. And what you can kind of see is one larger projection coming off rather than other ones. Okay, so these don't look like uh, nearly as uh, thick uh, axons or anything. So these are going to be dendrites kind of receiving information from other neurons. And this axon will be projecting away from the neuron to send an electrical signal elsewhere. 
looking at a cross section of a nerve, we can kind of see um, what it would look like under the microscope here. Um, if we take a nerve and we take this cross section here, we have these different fascicles within it. So you don't have to necessarily know that there's a fascicle or an endoneurium, but you do need to be able to identify an axon. So what you'll see here is I would provide like a picture of, you know, say one of these fascicles and you see all these dots here. Okay, all these dots are individual axons. So we have one blown up here coming out. So I could uh, show you a picture like this and ask you, uh, what is it? And you can tell me it's a nerve, or I could have a pointer pointing to the middle saying, what is one of these uh, like dots? Or what, what is one of these uh, circle uh, looking structures? And you would tell me it's an axon, okay? So that's uh, wrapping up for objective two here. Next, we have objective three, being able to identify uh, different gross anatomy of the nervous system. So we have the cerebral hemisphere, and the cerebral hemisphere is going to be uh, consisting of um, the cerebellum, the uh, spinal cord will be back here. Um, we also have the diencephalon. We have gyri and sulci. So sulci are going to be uh, these uh, ridges here and the gyri are going to be the grooves. The diencephalon is going to be a region that contains the thalamus. It's going to oversee functions related to survival. So it's going to also be related in uh, different memory. Uh, we have the brain stem. Uh, it will be down here. We'll get to that here shortly. But making sure that you can identify uh, the cerebral hemisphere as the cerebrum. So if we say the cerebrum or the cerebral hemisphere, those are the same thing. Fissures and sulci or uh, gyri, uh, these are basically the grooves and the ridges. So the top part or the, uh, the groove on the inside. Okay, so make sure you keep those straight. Look in your textbook if you have to, to get formal definitions that are gonna help uh, in identifying the difference between a sulci and a gyri. All right, so looking ahead here, we have the brain stem highlighted in orange here. Don't need to know the different parts right now, uh, not till we get there a little bit more here, but we also have the cerebellum here. Okay, so these are still parts um, of just gross anatomy, general regions of the brain that we're looking at, gross anatomy. So the cerebellum will be involved in movement, coordination, balance, posture. Brainstem will be uh, more associated with like breathing and just general survival behavior, basic survival, uh, physiological functions. And then we get to some meninges. So when it comes to meninges, these are basically just different layers to the brain. So on the very outside, we'll have skin. Uh, you can kind of see this from the outside. Underneath that, you'll have this periosteum, all right, and then bone. Underneath the bone, you know, the skull, we start getting to the different meninges. So the first two layers, this green colored in here, is called dura mater, all right? So it means strong mother, so dura mater. So this uh, is a nice thick layer. It's going to help cover and protect uh, the brain and spinal cord. And then we have this arachnoid matter, okay, this blue. So this means spider mother. It's kind of this spidery, areolar-like tissue, a lot of space in there. It's going to be a pretty small layer, actually. And then very, very small in between the arachnoid mater uh, and the pia mater. Are the, is the subarachnoid space. So when you think of arachnoid matter, uh, think of right underneath that being the subarachnoid space. And then the closest layer to actual brain tissue will be the pia matter. All right, so if you were in lab and you were doing a dissection of the uh, sheep brains, we would see the three layers in more detail when it comes to uh, actually being able to physically feel and see these meninges.